Hello there, it's Mike. This week, it's episode 163. It's the one that Mike rambles. This week on Cup of Rad. A little more awkward beginning because this week here I am sans Katie. Uh, and we don't necessarily have a whole lot of theme, but I wanted to kind of sit back and talk to you all about uh, anything and everything and nothing in between. Uh, Just because I know we've been a little bit infrequent about our episodes uh, this last little while, because at the end of the day, it's been a bit harder without new movies constantly. And then the different restrictions and the harder to get to the theater when movies come to theater or things hitting streaming that are going to different streaming services, uh, finding that it's making it a bit more difficult to stay on top of a weekly podcast uh, along with life. As you know, we are two over-caffeinated nerds, and uh, we watch a lot of TV, watch a lot of movies, collect a lot of toys, read a lot of comics, uh, and uh, we do have a kiddo. Uh, and as he is getting older, uh, we are also seeing those days of sitting down on the Saturday morning and you know, eating breakfast and watching those cartoons slowly start to dwindle as his interests move elsewhere. Uh, so that throws a bit of a wrench in the day. And then even with like Friday and Saturday kind of family movies, he's switching away from wanting to kind of hang out with us to do other things. So we're hoping to continue with our groove. We're just having to adjust and change So hopefully the adventure you'll be willing to allow us to plug your ears into our mouth holes and let us cold drip pour something amazing into you. Uh, So one of the things that I was really thinking about when we're about the whole scenario is because I ended up finding a cartoon that I loved as a kid and uh, on YouTube because I've been dying to try to get a hold of it to show the family. And it's something that spun out of a love of action figures. Uh, And it's one that was weird and quirky, and I've talked about it a lot. And what I'm talking about is is the Toxic Crusaders. Now, the Toxic Crusaders was made by Troma. Troma uh, is a company created mainly from Lloyd Kaufman uh, that takes their cinema to B level C level glory where it is filled with effects, um, gross gore, uh, sex, uh, violence, uh, and everything in between. And it's the, the schlocky, you know, crazy stuff that you don't expect to see on the shelves. And that is true because, uh, places like blockbuster did not carry, uh, trauma movies you usually had to go to more of a uh, local place now the toxic crusaders is based off of a very very r-rated trauma movie called the toxic avenger and from that the toxic avenger the whole story is is basically the idea that you know this nerd gets thrown into a vat of toxic waste and turns into a hulking behemoth that saves the day Well, somewhere along the line, someone decided to say, hey, you know what? We need to make that a cartoon. And that comes out of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So the Turtles had kind of hit their their stride. It was super popular. Everyone, you know, was loving it. And everyone, you know, was looking for what could be the next TMNT. So Fred Wolf uh, was one of the producers on TMNT and he was also one of the producers on the Toxic Crusaders as well as Chuck Lorre who also worked on TMNT uh, worked on Toxic Crusaders and you'll remember him from sitcoms like Two and a Half Men and um, The Big Band Theory so uh, going from kids cartoons all the way to uh, primetime television uh comedies that you know many are beloved by many um 
but a different style of humor at the same time. Now, Toxic Crusaders, for me, I remember them, and this is something that I am curious to see what other people feel just from any toy line, really. But I remember them more for the toys than the cartoon. And that's something that I find is interesting because I say this because when I started watching one the Toxic Crusaders, which I found on YouTube, full episodes, I didn't remember the episodes. I remember the voices and I remember some of the character mannerisms, but the actual stories I don't remember. Whereas when I go back and watch Thundercats and I go back and watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I remember the cartoon. Then I remember the toy. In some cases, the toy comes first. Uh, Some characters and stuff that didn't make it into the cartoon. But the Toxic Crusaders was also put out by Playmates. uh, And what they did as a cross promotional is they put little cards in the uh, Ninja Turtle package that said, you know, coming soon, Toxic Crusaders, it's cleanup time, right? As a teaser for the cartoon. So I rewatched a few of these episodes and I went to go share them with kiddo and he looked at me like I had just slapped him across the face with a wet fish. He was just in horror that I could actually enjoy this cartoon because it is so corny and so bad that it takes that B level to uh, the extreme. And I thought that was quite interesting, you know, because he actually stopped and he's like, dad, like they're making fun of themselves in their thing. And I was like, yeah, because it's kind of satire of its own because um, it talked he used in the first episode uh, a, a superhero, of e- a super mutant of equal strength and proportion or something like that. And they say it like six times. And it's just funny, but I like the, the the action figures and it's one of those toy lines that I wish I had never gotten rid of as a kid because Playmates had done such a fantastic job with the Toxic Crusaders. Uh, Toxie, he's the leader. He's the lovable oaf, as you would. Uh, green and he's in his bright orange uh, uh, tank top and he wears a tutu because he was uh, coerced into wearing a tutu to go on a date with this you know this popular biker-esque girl before they throw him in the in the toxic ooze Uh, and that's where your story is because you have this uh, Dr. Killamoff he has decided to come to Tromaville to pollute the town. So you look at those things and you think in the 90s that they were sitting there fighting climate change and pollution and all this stuff with 90s cartoons because, you know, there was Captain Planet. And even when we would look at, say, like Biker Mike from Mars, it's they all are fighting against pollution. Even TMNT has a, a pro, you know, world agenda over over the fact that you know there's the mutagen from the krang uh and i think that's something that we've we've kind of lost as a as a as a society with our cartoons so it's that moment of like sitting back and and really realizing how different things are because as i've said multiple times toxic crusaders is one of those brands that i remember the toys uh toxie we had major disaster he was a soldier that had gotten thrown into uh, what was it? Um, toxic fertilizer, which allowed him to control the plants. So he he looked like a, a toy soldier because uh, he had big green feet. He was like a mixture between swamp thing and poison ivy, uh, but a military man. Then you had no zone. No zone had a giant nose. Uh, He was all blue. He was a pilot that flew into a a, a radioactive silo of pepper. And yeah, no, I'm not making it up like he he flew it. And 
the pepper also not only mutated him into this blue giant nosed uh, man, it also fused an airplane wheel onto his foot. You had Junkyard, which was just a junkyard dog that was mutated into a hulking beast. And that one there was probably the one that fit the best with any of the Ninja Turtles. Now, that one, I don't know if you ever had that toy as a kid, but that one had a, a, a action feature where its mouth opened up and he had like a flexible tongue. Uh, as a child, I was so sad when that tongue finally ended up breaking off. It was it was very disappointing to have that that completely rip off out of his mouth. And that was always a sad thing about soft goods, uh, plastic on toys, especially back then. Uh, there's also Headbanger, uh, which was a scientist fused with a surfer. Um, and then the bad guys really rounded out with the Radiation Ranger, which was basically like a stormtrooper. Then you had uh, Bad to the Bone, which was a mutant that uh, Toxie actually creates by throwing this bad biker into a vat of toxic waste and the thing that was cool about that toy was that he was glow in the dark so i think that was a really fun uh addition especially for the toy right now from that uh the other one oh what was his name oh yeah it was just psycho wasn't it i think um there's yeah, there was a lot of like weird. Oh, Dr. Bender, Dr. Bender. That's what it was. So they they really created these grotesque um, characters for this cartoon. Uh, but Dr. Bender, he's like the second in command for Dr. K- uh, Kill him off, right? And he's always like self prophesizing, you know, what's going to happen in every episode. In one moment, he, he, he literally has his like, you know, don't worry, like we'll be OK unless Toxie gets uh, other super mutant friends. And lo and behold, other super mutant friends are driving by because they've heard that trauma is being protected by, um, you know, this toxic Avenger. So if we go back to the toys and stuff like that, like no zone, that was one of those ones that had uh, the head opened up. Right. And you would put goo in the no in the head and you put the clap back on the head and it would start to ooze out the nose, which I think is just freaking fantastic um, as an action feature. Right. Like that's such a cool thing to have. And. It wasn't the type of action feature that limited play, right? Like it wasn't one that you push a button and his arm would spring out or his leg would kick. Uh, It was it was a fairly functional one. And if you didn't have ooze, you didn't use it. Right. Which was, you know, okay. Uh, but what was cool with the Playmates line was not only did they they have these amazing sculpts and this like even the paint jobs on those old Playmates toys were just spectacular. Uh, they also had these, this, the paint job that was like this speckled, like almost like a glow in the dark splatter painting on them to just give them the, that extra aura of, of, of gross. Now, one thing that was uh, where I was going with this whole thing was here I am. I've got memories with toys because i would get these action figures because toys back in the day were 299 399 for an action figure uh and they had decent articulation uh for for what we were used to as kids uh versus now when you look at it uh, uh you can't get a toy i think under 20 dollars that resembles something that would have been in the cartoon Yes, there are toys that aren't, but there's not many others. Titan figures, yes. Uh, But it's amazing to see how the toy industry has changed. But as we as we watch this, we were watching this cartoon and I, I was thinking about it. I was like. You know, for me, where I lived at the time, we we only had 
two, sometimes three stations. And I know that sounds crazy, but I was on an antenna. I don't know if all of you know what an antenna is, but it's basically a giant metal rod uh, with extra spokes hanging off of it to catch the airwaves from the free television signal that was wafting through the air. Some people would use rabbit ears. Rabbit ears really only worked in like big city areas. We lived on a mountain, so we would get in clearly the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. We would get in CTV, the Canadian television, and we would occasionally, on a good day, get global. Now, for all those that live in other places in the world, you're probably wondering what the heck I'm saying and what's the point of this. But what I'm saying is, is that those were our stations. Uh, CBC mainly took stuff that was only Canadian content, so there wasn't a lot of cartoons on there that were exciting or thrilling. Global and CTV would have cartoons. They would have cartoon blocks. Whereas in the last 20 years or so, or even a little longer, but well, we've created de- de- dedicated television stations. And these dedicated television stations to cartoons, marathon cartoons over and over and over again, they play the same thing. They, they, they stretch cartoons out over multiple years. And you never really know when new stuff is or when new stuff isn't, right? Whereas growing up in the era that I did, I was a late 80s, early 90s child. So there's a lot of cartoons I wasn't really big on. Like, you know, I had a lot of Masters of the Universe toys. Masters of the Universe, I remember the toys. Uh, I remember some of the, the episodes, but mainly like Orko because Masters came out like the year I was born. So... Or a little bit, or I was like a two or something like that when it came out. It was, it was, so I wasn't super big, but I had Masters of the Universe because like that was the biggest toy ever. And I have fond memories with those figures. I wasn't really big into Transformers or G.I. Joe because those weren't at the time when I was growing up. So Turtles really, Turtles and Thundercats really were my two big cartoons. And then from that, then we got into Toxic Crusaders. We got Biker Mice from Mars, Animaniacs, uh, you know, Power Rangers. So that's sort of the Batman, the animated series, X-Men, Spider-Man, Gargoyles, the Disney Afternoon, which I know started way into the 80s because you had gummy bears and you had DuckTales and you had uh, the Wuzzles. You had um, Tailspin, Darkwing Duck, all these things that came out of that. Um but they were these 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 action blocks or cartoon blocks and you would come home after school and you would like who remembers that who who, who remembers racing home uh after school and and you know cuz we had good health grabbing a bag of chips and a, and, and a coke or a root beer and sitting in front of the TV because it's four o'clock or three o'clock and that there is you know, the action hour, you know, Fox for kids or whatever. That was your time. You went there, you, you, you sat and you, you watched it and we didn't have PVRs. We, we had sometimes some of us didn't even have VCRs to record it. And we would sit there and we would be stuck watching cartoons, not stuck watching, but we stuck watching commercials. And when you watch those commercials, what did you see? Toy ads. And how cool were those toy ads when we were a kid? You know, they they made sure that those toy ads were bright and colorful and that they they burst out and they were these these amazing looking action figures that came from an era that is almost bygone. I I I remember how much I would sit there and I'd be in awe and it would always be the want. When's the next figure? When's the next toy? When's this? Because they 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 fed us that in that that hour or two hour block after school. And then on Saturday, sometimes it was like a three or four hour block on Saturdays and Sundays. And you'd sit there and you watch the cartoons. But the thing I think that was really cool, at least for me, I don't know if you did this, but maybe you did. But you would sit there with your action figures. You'd have them on the sofa, on the floor. And when it went to commercial, you continue that battle. You continue that scene You'd be able to be like, you know what, this is what the story is going or this is how it's going. You'd play out your other scene with your figures and you would hold them and you would you would cherish them in that moment. What I think is lost 
And this is like this is like a whole like mini nostalgia idea for say the this podcast is and it's probably me getting old because I'm I'm hitting I'm hitting a big number in a, in a month uh, of realizing, especially with my son growing up and seeing that that excitement for those things are gone. Yes, he we've been able to introduce him to turtles. We've been able to introduce him to Batman. We've been able to introduce him to Thundercats, which Thundercats is a really weird one that gravitated to him. But I think it's really just the cat part. He doesn't offer up to watch that on his own. Growing up, I would always wake up early and I would run down and I would turn the TV on and try to catch the cartoons. Or I would try to record them when we finally did get a VCR. But now I think with the access of streaming, we've lost that ability because now we can watch things whenever we want. Now we can watch things how we want. We could finish a series in one day and and forget about it. Things drop so fast. And I know a lot of people don't like how Disney and some of the other ones are starting to do weekly releases, but I kind of like the weekly releases because it takes me back to when we had to wait, when we had to have patience, when we had to like savor something and digest something and theorize and enjoy and just devour it up and then hope for the next week. We're lucky we have the ability to record things or the fact if it's on streaming, it just shows up for us so we can just do that. We don't have to record it. We don't have to catch that 8 p.m. Book of Fett. We don't have to, uh, you know, record Peacemaker. We we can just watch it when it drops, but we devour it so fast. We don't sit and enjoy and see what's coming next. So there are some of those things where I think that's kind of nice within Canada versus the States is we do get a lot of stuff from other streaming services just on our cable. Like MacGruber is one of the things that we get just on our cable. The entire season and possible series dropped in December. But we are getting it on a weekly release. And it gives me something to be excited for because if it had dropped in December here as on Netflix, we would have watched it. We'd have watched it in, in, in three or four nights. Easy enough. Or even a couple of days. And it would be gone. It'd be done. And I would have had my laughs and I've been like, oh, same with Peacemaker. It seemed like The Mandalorian. I like the weekly drops because it allows me to take the time to enjoy it and really savor the almost the effort and the enjoyment that came out of it. And that's where going back to say for kids, we've trained them that that everything's available on streaming and they don't have to wait for anything and they don't have the patience. But then they also don't take the time. There's a lot of children that don't take the time. And I'm seeing that to start to form within our own son. And it's it's an interesting idea because I look at the fact that he doesn't necessarily really play with toys. Uh, he doesn't really have any real connection to that stuff. But I look at the marketing. I look at how things go, how things are going with that. I look at how how the use of all of it is there. And I realize that a lot of it, I think, comes from the fact that we are in a completely different world when it actually comes to all of our, how we, how we digest this media, right? Because even though I watched a bazillion, a trazillion, a ridiculous amount of cartoons over my years. And I had a crazy amount of, 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 of toys and everything. I realized that I have a lot of fond memories. And even if there was cartoons that I didn't watch, because we were in an era as, as 80s and 90s children that cartoons were a plenty and they had episodes like when you look at something like Animaniacs that show ran for four years and it had 99 episodes that's pretty spectacular the the Batman the Animated Series has six seasons 
five seasons. Each of those seasons has over 20 episodes. And then it spawned on to be the new adventures and it went on to be Justice League. And you've got then you've got Batman Beyond in there as well. Like these were great feats of of animation marvels. And I don't think we're ever going to see that again because our cartoons for this generation are getting smaller and less and less. Their movies are getting longer. Like we used to have like 70 minute movies. Now an animated movie is is two hours. Right. And they're deep because they're trying to almost speak more to us. They're trying to like throw it all back to us as, as people, not to our kids, because they're they're trying to find those audiences, because I believe now with how fast, especially with social media, how fast things are digested, that, that the kids just don't care. They don't have the same enjoyment of it as as we did. And I wonder if that's something we need to try to find out how to bring back, because when I look at it, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe my son's not ever going to be addicted to collecting toys like I am and my my plastic crack addiction that I, you know, suffer. And I'm constantly trying to relive my youth, like as I sit here right now and I talk about Toxic Crusader and I'm like desperately like Super 7, get your shit together and get out the ultimates because I want those toys back because I was stupid and I let them go. Would I want biker mice from Mars toys? Hells yeah, I would. But it's it's those those ideas and those those that that fun that we had growing up because we all had our thing as much as maybe these are my fandoms they might not be yours right there there there's there's so many so many things that came out of it and it, it's something that we all can bond over and i think that's one beautiful spectacular thing that can happen is that at the end of it, at the age that a lot of us are, and especially the one that listen to to us, there's nostalgia. Like, what cartoons? What what toy? What toy did you love? What toy do you wish you still had? What what made you get up and play with? What were ones that you missed? What were things that you wish you had? Like, there's one thing right there. One action figure that I wish I had had growing up was a Bartman. There was a company that made Bartman and I'd found it in this like rinky dinky little little toy shop in downtown where we live back when I was a kid. But it was like it was a specialty shop and it was like stupid expensive when I could go to the local Zellers and buy figures for, you know, two, three ninety nine. But this thing was like 15 bucks back then. Well, lo and behold, now, yes, it's still going to be expensive as all can be. It's, it's not cheap. But Super 7 is bringing out a Bartman. Now I can tangibly have that thing that 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 brought me memories because Simpsons, when I found the Simpsons, dude, I was like, this is edgy. This is fun. And the more I watch the Simpsons now being an adult, the, the even the modern stuff, it captivates me because I see the jokes that I never saw as a child because it was always seen as a children's show. Bob's Burgers, I watch and I see those jokes and I laugh and I find all these things that I would never have got as a kid. And it's it even goes for Family Guy, it goes for South Park, it goes for all those cartoons where there's these layers, you know. We always laugh at Shrek talking about there's layers in an onion because there's layers to ogres. But we as beings have layers and stories have layers. Uh, and it's just a, a wild thing as you get older and you see this and you want to really enjoy it but where i was going with this whole thing is that 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 i think at the end of the day nostalgia takes over nostalgia takes us to a place and we throw on our glasses and we have full radnesia and after watching those toxic crusader episodes and having my son call me out for being a dumbass for liking such a corny cartoon, I realized that the cartoon sucked, but the toys were awesome. Would I buy the toys if Super 7 brings out the rest of the toys? Of course I would, because that nostalgia is there for those figures, because those were good memories of my childhood. Did I have a great childhood? I didn't have a bad childhood. You know, one of the memories, like I, I said this to Katie, I said this memory to Katie. I was like, you know, I grew up in a pub my mother worked at a pub and on saturdays and sundays we would go to that pub now, is that something you would really wouldn't necessarily do with a child now 
from, you know, 6.30 till 10.30, I could watch cartoons on the big screen. A hundred and something inches of, of big screen glory. Watching Batman, the animated series, X-Men, Spider-Man, The Tick, Toxic Crusaders, Ninja Turtles. You know, Animaniacs on a big ass TV. Sure, it smelled like cigarette smoke. Sure, the seat I was laying, sitting in had alcohol on it. But that didn't matter because that glow from that screen is what allowed me to forget that world I was in and I immersed into another And I was lucky enough to still be able to get toys. And then I was able to carry those on. So when I did get to go home and play with my toys, that's what I I would do. And then that's where I would go and that's where I would be. And I would be able to recreate those moments. Openly enough, the X-Men toys, I really hated those toys. For the most part, they were cool looking. Those Toy Biz ones, I know a lot of you will probably be screaming in this moment, but Toy Biz, their X-Men figures back in the day, the 90s X-Men toys, they had so many action features that it just totally, totally ruined it. Sure, the Cyclops was dope. Like, the Cyclops, when you put a little bu- push a little button on his back and he would his eyes would light up, that was cool. But the fact that there was a suction cup on Nightcrawler's hand and knee, that was lame. Uh gambit with the kicking action on his foot uh not so cool especially when the spring would break uh, i had a, the spring break on gambit and he had a uh, like what was a plastic coat that was made out of like a garbage bag the other one that didn't make sense was beast beast had springs in his leg and a wheel on his back and you like pushed him down and then you pushed on the wheel and then it would like try to do a flip most often beast always just face planted and skidded across the floor and that's why the Playmates toys for me, like Playmates in the 90s, in the late 80s, 90s, they made some of the best toys with some of the best memories because I absolutely love the Ninja Turtle figures and I absolutely love the Toxic Crusaders figures. They made some of the best toys uh, because they had amazing detail, paint, and they had the articulation that you needed for your little chubby child hands. Not like Mattel's masters those were great toys too you know i had i had prince adam riding uh my little pony i gotten rainbow dash for christmas for uh, for birthday from one of my cousins and i have a photo somewhere i should find it but it, it, it is uh prince adam riding uh rainbow dash and i was like that's that's that that's something that's needed you know to, to have that those moments where like those toys cross you know they're able to be in their own world uh and I think that's something that's just is lost because we were looking at toys, kiddo and I, and like every commercial that showed up f- during the commercial breaks on one of the shows we were watching, it was like popping a zit, walking around dog poo, uh, remote control bat m- mobile that also transformed into a bat cave. I think it was, uh, you know, color changing Barbies where you submerge the entire thing into a vat and it like sheds its skin like a snake to become a mermaid or something like everything did something. And, and that was a thing that was cool was like you had to use your imagination. You know, now everything has a vehicle and a place that lights up, makes sound and all this. But like, how many of you remember? How many of you remember? playing with toys on your sofa the sofa was a rock it was a cave it was it was it was the the plateau you know how many you go under the sofa or you went into a a drawer or a cabinet you know to have those adventures i didn't have a lot of vehicles i didn't have a lot of play sets i had to create those things uh and my imagination i think is better for it my my ability to to look at something and, and be in awe of something because you see that that magical moment that that just kind of opens up everything. I don't really know what this episode is about. I don't really know what I'm saying. I I well, I know what I'm saying, but I I think I think if we could just sit back, like and and, and you know, see these things for for what they were, were good memories, but also be okay with saying, you know what, that show was kind of shitty. Because let's let's be honest, like we recently rewatched the entire Thundercats and 
it is 100% ridiculous. And the jokes that are in Thundercats Roar, a show that was lambasted for its animation style, even though it had amazing push and pull bounce and rhythm, the jokes that they make about Thundercats are relevant to what a lot of our conversations were. And I think that's where I could find the enjoyment because I can't take it too serious because let's be honest, humanoid cat people from another planet crash land on the third rotation of earth where an evil mummy has enslaved the world and they have to try to free it from its snare. It's a ridiculous plot, but it's cool. Yeah. Would I want to see a live action? I doubt it. I really doubt it. We've debated that before and I don't think I would because my nostalgia over the few action figures I had and, and what I remember, even after re-watching it, even after watching Roar, even now watching the reboot, I sit back and I say, hey, this is still a cool, fun idea. Could they do a good uh, uh, CG movie? Probably. They could probably do if they if they take that 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 kind of two hour format format. Totally. But then we have the reboot and the reboot has done such a great job from what we've been watching. I, I, I I'm sad that it never got to go further with it. Same with Ninja Turtles. Everything brings something because at the end of the day, we have to realize these these franchises need to reboot, reload to find new audiences and new captivation. So that's where a lot of the humor is, is because this generation, they watch YouTube for prank videos. They watch YouTube for or TikTok for for people doing stupid shit. And that's where the cartoons have to come up with the idea to look like stupid shit to try to grab the attention of these kids. Otherwise, these franchises die. They become forgotten. They become nothing. And that's that's what we don't want to see. You don't want to see some of these more obscure franchises die. And that's where I wish we would see a reboot of uh, Toxic Crusaders. Uh, even like Biker Mice. Those, you know, and there's got to be like shout out the ones that you want to see rebooted. Do you want to see Tiger Sharks? Do you want to see Silverhawks? Do you want to see something like there's there's got to be, you know, something out there that they can they can redo to bring it to the new generation sure it's not going to be the same but maybe maybe it will gravitate to someone's imagination some kid will see it and be inspired to go on and create something great and that's the whole purpose this is art influencing life to do something to create to become better to become amazing instead of just becoming a consumer and Yes, I consume. I consume a lot. So there's a hypocrisy in there, but we all want to create. And that's what I do with like my Instagram. I create, I, I take the things that I consume and maybe they're not the best and maybe they're not the most poignant, but I take what's in my brain and I put it on the page. I put it out there as a feeling, an emotion. It's what invokes me to, to just be. And it brings me joy. And maybe that's what this whole episode is about, is, is, is finding your joy. Finding your joy in what you do for yourself, not for anyone else, but for you. Not attacking anyone else because they don't like it. No, not attacking anyone else for saying or for anything, but finding what you enjoy about your fandom, finding what you enjoy about your life in that moment that allowed you to create something. Maybe it's a picture. Maybe it's a drawing. Maybe it's a song. Maybe it's a poem. Maybe it's it's a, a story. Maybe you'll never be published. Maybe you'll never go viral. But you created it and it came from you. It, its birth could inspire someone else. And that's really what we we hope i i hope with 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 our podcast not only does it it help me through a traumatic event to uh, expel and express and allow myself to talk to be able to to think and be but talk about what i like and spend time with one of my best friends to talk more about something it's like i hope it inspires one of you to go watch something you've never watched before but maybe even, or watch something you have, but look at it with a new lens, look at it with a new eye and, and just kind of see the hard work. And maybe at the end of the day too, maybe you'll go out and create something. Maybe 
Something we say or do will inspire you to have joy. And that's that's all, all we can want is for anyone to inspire anyone to find joy. Because I get a lot of joy from a lot of the people that, that I interact with on, on Instagram and stuff with their photos. It brings me joy to see the hard work that you're all doing out there with your art, with your being, whether it being the poetry or the, the toy photos uh, or, or through, through like podcasts and it brings me joy. And that's what I would love to do. I would love to bring more joy to the world. I think that is what we need. I would love to be out there. I would love to be out there meeting people. I would like to go out there and meet you and talk to you about your hobby. Like right now, shout out what your favorite thing is. If you don't have a favorite thing, if that brings you anxiety, give me your top five things, favorite, top five movies, top five songs, top five books, top five video games, top five toys, top five cartoons no particular order don't rate them because we don't need to rate them because they're special to us and i think that's what is the best thing about fandom is it's special to to you and only you and it doesn't matter to anyone else to any anyone just you and in this moment you can be amazing and you can be fantastic and you can create even if it's a stick man on a paper, you created something that could live on for infamy. And that's the joy. But going back, going back, cartoons, cartoons, they inspire me. They inspire me. They bring me good memories because even during the worst times growing up, cartoons were there. Toys were there. They bring me joy. And taking pictures of them bring me joy because I'm able to share them with you. The podcast brings me joy to, to spread how I feel about something to this world, you know, and I missed my mark. I missed, missed where I was going in life growing up because of, of how life decided to throw me rails. And instead of giving up, like it is easy to think and do, I persevere and I find new ways to bring joy Maybe once all this COVID stuff is done, maybe once life kind of gets back on track, maybe I'll, I'll achieve my, my dreams of, of journalistic joy and going out and finding people and talking and sitting down, grabbing a beer, grabbing a coffee and sitting down and having you in front of the mic and say, hey, what brings you joy? And that's that's a whole part of the rant. So even though where we started way back with cartoons and me talking about Toxic Crusaders uh, and 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 and. My memories and what brings me joy is those toys because those toys were friggin' amazing and they worked really well with Ninja Turtles and they were like a supplement series for me. Even though the tar- cartoon I realize is not, it's it's joy. And I probably sound really high right now. I probably sound just out of my mind, cuckoo banana pants. Uh, but it's those moments where this is the one where Mike rambles. Because I want you to find joy. So I, I hope after you listen to this, you 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 go out and you create something and tag me. Let me see it. Let me see your art. Let me see your 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 words, your everything. And just try, try so much to just stay positive and stay rad, dudes. That's the key is staying rad, staying positive. I want to thank you for for being here for this rambling and I hope you come back. I hope you continue to enjoy what we, we do and what we put out there and let us be part. Tag us, comment, all that kind of stuff. And as I always say, thank you for listening. And remember, stay rad, dudes. 